think people can have their own opinions, but I think uh, I hope that people see me as a as a good person. <laughs> Got the potential to become one of the next big thing. This is just the start of Martin Adegaard. People can think what they want, but uh, yeah, it's not always like you see on TV. You know, it can be more behind than just what you see on the screen. When you say home and my childhood, I would think of the, the pitch next to my house. That's like my childhood, that's home for me. I was very lucky, you know, to, to grow up um, at this time because they just made this artificial pitch before that was just, uh, yeah, I don't know how you say this, but like solid surface. So it was difficult to play and then they changed it to artificial and uh, yeah, just 100 meters from my house. So that's basically where I lived. It was beautiful. I was very happy. Um, yeah, I was a very happy kid. I was just playing football. Um, I had friends around me, a good family. And yeah, I was just a very happy kid. Um, as I said, a lot of my childhood was about football. So uh, all my friends were playing football. So, um, so yeah, it was school and, and football and, and that was it. My mom is the best. She's the... Yeah, nicest, warmest, um, yeah, best person. So she's always there and no matter what, she's always there for me. And um, yeah, so where I was speaking to my mom about everything was mainly about football with my dad. So it was a bit different. Um, but yeah, it was my coach um, and I trained with him since I was a baby. Um, so I think I was very lucky to, to have him and he played football before as well. So. He knew some things other parents didn't know, <laughs> so I was lucky to have him and, um, and we could train a lot of details and, and things other kids didn't do, so I think it was, was important for me. I always felt that I was a bit special, I was more talented than than the other ones, uh, I was always training, playing with the, the older guys and I did quite well so I knew always that I had something special and then yeah when I was 13, 14 I started to train with the first team in Norway in the club I played for so yeah I felt it from, from quite a young age and then yeah I played the game with the first team, friendly game when I was 13 for this club so after this was with a lot of attention and I think that's when it yeah, started after this game because I came on, played 45 minutes, and uh, and I did okay. And I was a baby, so after this was when people started to to talk and, and write and all this. Yeah, I think a lot of people came to the game to to watch me and all this. So it was a strange hype, I would say. I was very shy. When you go from like being a kid to being adult, you have like a celebration uh, kind of thing when you're like 14 or something like this, 15. Uh, and then I remember, because it's just the family and then normal, it's normal that the one who's doing it is like, he holds, a, he holds a speech. Like the family just say, thank you for coming and all this. And I didn't do it because I was too scared <laughs> in front of my family. <laughs> and then two years later, I signed for Madrid. So during that season, towards the end of the season, I just felt like, um, and obviously I knew that a lot of people, a lot of clubs were interested, because I saw that in the press, and also my dad told me that uh, there was some clubs calling. <laughs> I was here in, in Arsenal. I met Arsene, Arsene Wenger, I spoke to him. I trained a little bit here at the training ground. I had a very good talk to him, and um, yeah, I, w I was close, close, you know, to coming here back then. Um, but it was just the feeling that Madrid was the best and in Madrid they had the second team as well so I was always going to
be playing games, so it was just the total that made me go there instead. I just remember this day really, really good because um, we were going to do the like the medical and all this, and then the press conference. I was thinking like, okay, I, I just I bring some stuff, and when we get there, I can change and everything. So I just wake up in the morning, this morning, don't go to the shower, just put something on, go to the airport, almost sleeping, you know, in the car on the way to the airport. Very early in the morning, so I'm like, my hair is like all over and I'm just sleeping, you know. And then we get there to Madrid, to the airport, and they take us straight to the training ground. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> doing like this, you know, <laughs> because my hair was like all over. I just put on a jumper from, yeah, top of the of the wardrobe, you know. So I'm there in this like striped jumper looking like yeah, a baby, you know, on the press conference. So it's, it's just funny when you think of this being like the biggest day, you know, like you're on the biggest stage and you're like not even went to the shower this morning. <laughs> I think they actually, I think they they liked it the way I was, um, the way I spoke. I was very feel like the people they sort of like connected to me a little bit like they cared for me or like because I was like very shy and like in this jump and I was just a normal person you know they could see that so I think a lot of people they just yeah felt for me in some way you know I didn't speak Spanish at the time so it was and it was not too many guys who spoke English there so the ones who did, they helped me a lot, like yeah, Modric, Kroos, all these guys, uh, Ronaldo as well, when he was there, was really, really kind and really nice. So I think, yeah, the first team players was, was really helpful and, uh, and uh, I was helping me a lot, to be honest, yeah. The first few days is always like a bit strange, a bit special, but then it's strange also how fast you get used to it, like uh, walking in and seeing all these players and yeah, things I would dream of, you know, and things I would die for a few years earlier. When we talk about me being this shy and all this as well, it's, I'm a different person today and I think all the things that happened to me those years uh, in Madrid, moving there, learning a new language, uh, having a difficult time, all this has made me a better player, better person and a more confident person. So, so this was the first six months, then I stay another season. Um, and I'm doing okay. I'm not playing with the first team, but I'm there um, trying to stay calm, trying to just improve all the time. And then, um, and then, yeah, after two years, I feel like I need to move um, because I feel like I'm stopping a little bit the progression and everything. And that's when I feel like um, I need to go somewhere and play first team football. I was there for one and a half season and I think it was quite good but uh, because I didn't score enough goals, didn't have enough assists, no one really yeah, talked about it or appreciated what I did. I went to Vitesse, another Dutch club, so again I did one and a half season in, uh, in Herenpen, the other Dutch club. and. After this, I thought I was doing okay. I think I did a lot of good games. I had a few injuries, so I wasn't playing all the games, but I did okay. Uh, but it wasn't a lot of teams interested after this. And I was pretty sure that I didn't want to go back to Madrid because I didn't expect to, to play or, or to be a part of the first team. So I did the preseason with Madrid and then I decided to, to go to Vitesse. I think after two years in Madrid and then going to to Holland and playing one and a half year without yeah convincing maybe too many uh, people were starting like to say that this was like make it or break it for me and I was still 18 you know I did the preseason then I did this season in the test and I said um, or we agreed me and my agent and I we were both, we agreed that I needed to do another loan. I wasn't ready to, to go back to Madrid. Uh, they didn't want to sell me, so another loan. I 
didn't know too much about this club from before, but obviously I've seen games and I knew the players and, and some and some other things, but I didn't know too much about this club, but everything went well from from yeah the beginning. So uh, I was supposed to stay there two years, but it was only one year in the end. We met Madrid in the cup and uh, we played at the Bernabeu. And, uh, and yeah, we won, I scored. <laughs> So uh, that was a very, very special day. I didn't move, I was just like <laughs> standing still. Like someone came and lifted me up, I remember. But I was just like stone face. <laughs> no, I, I think it was, um, I was thinking about this before and I didn't want to, I wanted to be respectful. Uh, it was the club who owned me. Um, and yeah, I wanted to be respectful and I think it was the right thing to do. Uh, we said I wanted to get some more stability and uh, it would be good to do a two-year loan and everyone agreed. Uh, but they had the option to take me back after the first year. Chidam was the coach at that time for the first team and, and he called me um, and said he wanted me to come back. I think it was a bit tough, you know, when I came back and I didn't... I, I played the two first games and then after that I didn't play. Uh, and I was supposed to stay in the Real Sociedad for two years. But I was just speaking with my agent uh, in December, discussing a little bit, and then um, yeah, he was trying to calm me down because I was just coming back, you know, from yeah, cancelling a loan to come back, and then after <laughs> five six months, I was I wanted to go again, you know. So he was maybe not too happy about that. Uh, so he was already in touch a little bit with Arsenal. So when I had this feeling uh, that I wanted to go, I told him to, okay, contact them, check it out. <laughs> I was just very happy. I just felt like it was the right thing to do. Um, I had this very strong feeling inside that this was a good thing. And I think from the first talk, you just realized straight away that he's different level. I feel like I'm on a different level now, of course, than I was in the beginning, so I've improved a lot. But I think I think I did it quite good in the beginning and to come in for a new team and everything, new system to play, I think I did okay from the beginning. But at the same time, I think I think it was terrible to play without fans, you know. It's such a big difference and to play a game in front of an empty stadium is just ah, it's a nightmare. I was thinking actually to, that I was going to stay here, uh, but then Madrid again wanted me to come back. So, so yeah, the club, I think Arsenal wanted me to stay. Um, I was very happy here, but Madrid said you have to come back. So I went back, I did the preseason there, and then, yeah, uh, after a while I just spoke to the, to the coach there, Ancelotti, and we had a talk, and I found out that. I wasn't, they didn't want me as much as they said in the summer, you know, so that's when I, we called Arsenal again and everything worked out well. Now that big transfer news, Martin Odegaard is in London for a medical ahead of a return to Arsenal on a permanent yeah. deal. I know this guy. <laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> I think the, first of all, the manager, Arteta, and then the whole club. Uh, how things was changing and what they wanted to do here, uh, what they wanted to build. Everyone knows their, their role, everyone knows the system and that makes it a lot easier to play, you know, everyone knows what they, they have to do. And as I said before as well with, with Mikel and all the things he says before a game and how he prepares us, the whole staff, how they prepare us, I think it's just... Uh, yeah, a uh, good team working together in a good way and then it's easier to, to do well. I was being captain in a few games and we had a situation with Aubameyang and then uh, Laka was injured for a bit and then, then I was captain in a few games. So I had the experience, I I'm also captain for a national team. So, so yeah, what can I say? But I didn't expect it to be, to be named captain. Uh, at least not <laughs> when I first came here, you know, uh, two years later I'm, and I'm captain, so... No, it's been a bit, it's been a lot different 
to what I imagined, you know, like when I first signed for Madrid, I didn't imagine like going <laughs> Holland, then Spain again, then Arsenal, then Madrid and back here. So it's been very different to, to what I expected, but I mean, you, you, you cannot predict anything, you know, so you just have to enjoy every day and um, I'm very happy where I am at the moment. Um, if you said to me when I was 10 years old that when you're 24 you're going to play for Arsenal and you're going to be captain there, I would be, yeah, I would die for this, you know, so yeah, I'm living, I'm living the dream. <laughs>